Quora. Do you know what Quora is? No. That's <laughs> <laughs> a question website. It's a question website. Quora. Quora. It's a question website. <laughs> I'm Eddie Redmayne, and I'm going undercover on the internet, which I just feel like no one should do. But what we're going to do. It's actually me. Uh, yeah, no, seriously, it is actually me. First up, Twitter. Delara Elbeer says, do you know what's missing in cats, Eddie Redmayne? I feel that I don't have a good enough figure for cats. <laughs> and I watched the new Cats trailer the other day and, and Idris Elba just looks so sort of ripped as a cat. And I feel like that was probably why I didn't get the call from Tom Hooper, but I'm not taking it personally at all. Posted, what is your favorite swear word? Um, I love a f and it's a good, onomatopoeic, satisfying, this is horrendous, I'm going beetroot, I've, I love the word f Right, next. MTV News says, should Felicity Jones and Eddie Redmayne do all their films together? I think, I mean, I would say yes. I would uh, love to work with Felicity Jones. In this film, literally, we were confined to a basket about the size of this table for about three months, and we loved each other at the end anyway, so I think that's a testament to extreme work conditions and uh, true friendship. But also what happened with this film is we got to the end of filming and we were sitting in the basket covered in rain and sort of frostbite and snow, and I said to Felicity, hasn't this been such a wonderful experience? Because my character basically gets to pass out for a lot of it and just be quite relaxed. And she said, no, it's been absolute hell from the work. <laughs> but that's, I, th I take, because she basically had to do a load of stunt, brutal, painful work the whole way through the film. I'm trying to take that as not as a personal slight, but I would love to do all my films with Felicity Jones. Moving on. David Lau, Why Davy at Why Davy says, does anyone know why Eddie Redmayne hasn't done another musical? He sang so well in the film of Lemmy's Rubs. David, I love you. Thank you for being generous. Not sure everyone agreed with you. There have been reference to me sounding like Kermit the Frog. I kind of enjoyed singing until I saw myself in Lemmy's Rubs. A lot of the character in Lemmy's Rubs sings really high. It's kind of too high for my voice, so I spent most of the film kind of doing that. Which doesn't, it doesn't look particularly appealing when you're watching a film. And then we, when we came to sing live at the Oscars, I asked the composer if there was any chance we could sing it down a tone or two, and he was like, yeah, yeah, totally. I was like, why didn't I ask him that while we were making the movie? That movie would have been so much less painful for me and for audience members listening to me. Anyway, I would love to do another musical one day. Thanks, David. All right, next. B-E-L at Filmaraki, replying to at West Thingy. <laughs> Name of the I need a movie where the big three British in it, Benedict Cumberplus, <laughs> Kirkumaplus, Eddie Redmayne and Tom Hiddleston. A war movie would be cool, or a classical movie like Three Musketeers, or maybe a new James Bond movie, Thomas Bond, Eddie as the villain, Ben as MI6 new boss. That's quite a pitch. I like the idea of Benedict Kirkumaplus. Why, why does Ben get like a cool surname and Tom and I don't. I also quite like the idea of the Three Musketeers. I mean, if that happens, do you think that um, at Phil Meraki gets like a commission? Let's put that out into the ether. Three Musketeers, that's good. Except I can't grow facial hair. Submit. Sarah Gailey, who has a tick, which means she's dead important. Questions I had are so far while watching Jupiter Ascending. Is it Scientology? Not as far as I was aware. I always saw it as a sort of big opera based on the idea of turning all human beings into like face cream. Is it fan fiction? No. Is it based on a comic book? No. Chanum Taters. Uh, ice skating or rollerblading? The answer is he was rollerblading and he became like a fiendish rollerblader for it. What is Eddie Redmayne's accent? There was a little minor footnote in the script which talked about how my character Belem Abrasix had had his throat ripped out. Now it was, wasn't really mentioned much in the actual film. And so I talked like that for the entire movie. It was a bold character choice that didn't work very well. What kind of lizard is that man? That man is a big sort of dragon figure that was actually uh, an actor on stilts with lots of bubbles on his head. Eddie Redmayne saying, where will I go, what shall I do, always gets me. Like, I'm here, let me love you. Crying emoji. Where will I go, what shall I do? Did I actually say that in a movie? <laughs> You're very welcome to come here. Love me, it's lovely, thank you. Replied. Wikipedia. Wikipedia says, From the age of 10, Redman attended the Jackie Palmer Stage School, where he found his love for acting and singing alongside fellow star James Corden. This is true. So uh, Jackie Palmer Stage School is a place in High Wycombe, outside of London, and I would go there at weekends and do sort of acting and singing, and James was there, he was a couple of years older than me, and my memory of it is he was a brilliant street dancer. And we became pals then. Like, it's weird enough as an actor to get to sort of work in this world and to have fun doing it, have these 
extraordinary experiences. But when you get to sort of see a pal doing it at the same time and you get to reminisce and share the absurdity of it all, uh, it's, a, it's a great bonus. So I think he's genius, James. All right, next, IMDb. Was asked to audition for the role of Kylo Ren in Star Wars Episode 7 and The Force Awakens, he revealed that the audition was horrible. The role eventually went to Adam Driver. I think it was Kylo Ren that I was auditioning for. The reason the audition was horrible was because I was doing my Jupiter Ascending voice, because I've only got one sci fi villain in me, and that one wasn't very successful. Adam Driver got the part, which was great for not only the Star Wars universe, but the universe generally. Submit. While he was at Eton College, he auditioned for the role of Tom Marvolo Riddle in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets 2002. However, he did not get the call back from the casting director. That is totally true. In fact, I think they stopped the audition before I'd even finished saying the lines. That was a scarring moment, but thanks for bringing it up. Eddie Redman is colorblind. This is very true. Um, yeah, not much to say to that. All right, next. Eddie Remy used to be flatmates with fellow actors Jamie Dornan and Andrew Garfield. This is true. We used to go to LA in January to get out of London to try and get work in pilot season. And the actual reality is it was just pouring with rain in London. And so we would tell all our family and friends that we had to go look for work in Los Angeles. Submit. On a plane recently, I fell asleep. And when I woke up, the man next to me asked, excuse me, are you somebody important? I must have looked confused because he explained, I'm asking because the stewardesses came over and were watching you sleep. This is true. This happened a, a while back and I didn't really know how to respond to the entire situation. So I do what I generally do, which is bodily functions take over and I just went be true. Reddit. Does Eddie Redmayne sing empty chairs and empty tables in chess voice, or does he use falsetto on the high notes? Are the high notes in empty chairs and empty tables meant to be sung in falsetto or chess voice? It's a very intricate, detailed question. Um, the answer is they're meant to be sung in chess voice, but I can't sing them. Unless I'm singing it really loudly, I couldn't reach those notes in chess voice. So I made a character choice that came out through circumstance that because he was being so internal, he would sing those early ones in falsetto. Uh, so yeah, they probably should be sung in chess voice, but I sang them in falsetto, falsetto, chess voice, falsetto. Posted, YouTube. People just forget how hard your jobs are, don't they? No, it looks so easy. It looks so easy, but it's not. Look what we go through. It was quite easy for me. I just I'm passed out for quite a long time. <laughs> this is from Crest Time. Eddie R, how do you prep for the intense, emotionally demanding scenes that you're known for nailing so well? Do you know, it totally depends on the film and the circumstance and the character. In theory of everything, it was easy in the scenes to play the emotion because you'd spent months meeting people living with a very brutal disease and meet a Hawking family who were just so lovely and and the reality of the tragedy was pretty close posted with all the traveling and different accents and characters you get into i wonder what is the most british thing that's synonymous with being back home for you eddie a love of marmite salt and vinegar squares and discos two snacks that are quite english and the kind of packaging hasn't really changed since the 80s when i get back to heathrow i'll always go straight to wh smith which is a kind of uh, newspaper store and get a packet of salt and vinegar discos and salt and vinegar squares and then i feel like i'm at home Quora. How did Eddie Redmayne do the coloring book magic trick? When I was uh, young, I had a brother who was six years younger than me. And when I was about nine or 10, I was really into magic. There was this great magic shop in London um, called Davenport's, which I used to go to. And I was obsessed with it. And so when I was doing the Graham Norton show, they wanted me to do some magic because they knew I was interested in it. And they said, could you find anything? And, and the easiest magic trick in the world that you just have to buy. Mm. Oh, I've just been thrown out of the magic circle uh, is this one called the magic coloring book and, and it was really good but i couldn't possibly tell you how to do it because then i would be hurting the careers of magicians submit what do you think is eddie redmayne's best film performance i know for a fact that the internet is divided on this it's either theory of everything or jupiter ascending depending on who who you are posted why are british gentlemen so charming like eddie redmayne tom hiddleston david beckham benedict cumberbatch etc i know why tom hiddleston's so charming because he has a delicious voice that you want to swim in david beckham's so charming because he has extraordinary dress sense incredibly delicate with his feet i know why benedict is so charming because he's a phenomenal actor and a kind human being I i'm charmed by association what is eddie redmayne's method of acting honestly I never went to drama school, so you always feel like you're frauding your way through acting life. From when I started to work with really brilliant actors, so you just try and 
watch how they work and, and lean things, but I've got to say, I'm making this film at the moment called The Trial of the Chicago Seven with a group of staggering actors. Mark Rylance, Sasha Baron Cohen, Jeremy Strong, Alex Sharp, Michael Keaton, Frank Langella. And what's been most riveting of all in the process is they all have completely different processes. And so when you put all of these actors into kind of one mishmash. Brilliant. Such fun to watch. On a scale of one to 10, how posh would you rate Eddie Redmayne's accent? And the weird thing about accents is if you have one, you kind of can't hear it. But I mean, I've had sort of the most posh education imaginable. So I imagine it's probably up there in the tens. Did Eddie Redmayne use a body double for the nude scene in The Danish Girl? No, Eddie Redmayne did not use a body double for the nude scene in The Danish Girl. Eddie Redmayne used his own body. Basically, getting naked in front of lots of people was just really not that much fun, <laughs> I've realized. And that day was particularly excruciating. So that was full Redmayne. How are British actors different from American actors? I actually don't know the answer to that. We're all so different. There's alchemy in that. There's something that's unspecific. Generally, British actors, myself included, you have, you have a massive learning curve when you start working on screen because you're just learning from your mistakes, whereas I feel American actors are brought up in that tradition, so are, are much quicker to find that. Okay, that's it. I'm signing off the internet. I kind of love you, I kind of hate you. Bye.